What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm your girl Andy Crimson and this is Mukbangs and Hangs. How are you guys doing today? I feel amazing. I really love my outfit. You can't see it but I'm wearing a dress and I love the way I did my makeup and I've got some new bling to go with my outfit. More on that later. Um, today we are featuring KFC. Now I know I've said before that I didn't really like it. I've never featured it on the channel, but I've had it like in the off time or whatever, and I wasn't really impressed, but they have the new Jack Harlow meal and I wanted to try it out for you guys. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's check it out. Now I've seen some people uh, reviewing it and uh, they actually had like a bag with his face on it. And so far, just the regular old, you know, box and bag okay um now i wasn't too sure if there's like a special sauce that uh jack harlow uses or a certain way he has his uh meal but it looked pretty standard to me i did get the um mac and cheese and coleslaw with it yeah okay so coleslaw now i know on this channel i've had like excellent chicken sandwiches and then some okay ones and I'm willing to give this a try again and to see where it stacks up. Did they give me utensil? Yes, they did. First look at the KFC regular chicken sandwich, Jack Harlow style. There's got this like, I don't know if it's mayo or it's gonna be some special sauce. There's some on the bottom, but the sandwich is kind of breaking. So I'm gonna put it down over here. Okay. Guys, I have been having some really crazy apoc apocalyptic dreams and um, they're very vivid. And it's almost been several nights in a row or like every other night or whatever. And I just find it so strange. Like I don't eat late. I don't know what that means, you know? What is the universe trying to tell me? And you know, for the most part, I wake up okay, I sleep okay, but it's just like, uh, what does it all mean? Like, I had like a zombie version dream last night. But who knows? Okay guys, let's get this first bite right here. It's decent enough. It was a little dry. Oh, I gleated. It was a little dry on first bite. And I hate how it's like ripping on the bottom, so I'm like trying to juggle it. But it's okay. I don't know if, if this is like their special sauce. I really can't tell what it is. But it's it's decent. But albeit a little dry. Let's try this mac and cheese. Get down to the business. Hmm. It's pretty good. Very, very cheesy. So guys, I have not seen the new Jurassic World yet just because there's like, it's still crowded at the movies. Like I don't like sitting next to people 
I don't like a lot of kids in the theater. Like when I'm watching a movie, I like to have my space and like be immersed in the moment. And I, I was checking like religiously, okay, maybe this day or maybe at this time there'll be nobody, but I've been even hearing like people will go at 10 and it's packed. So I'm just like, oh, another weekend. <laughs> maybe we'll go, we'll, I'll get a chance to see it this weekend. I'm not sure. I've been staying away from hearing what people think about it. Any kind of spoilers, I just wanna like have an unbiased opinion as possible. It's a pretty thick patty. I'm a little underwhelmed by this branding of this meal. Like I figured they should have a, some sort of sauce, like a new sauce, kind of how they did the saweetie sauce, sweetie sauce at McDonald's, or a certain way that um, he makes his sandwich, kind of like uh, Megan the Stallion did for McDonald's also. I think it was McDonald's or was it Popeyes? Whatever the case may be very unimaginative but decent so far pretty decent so i've been thinking about a topic for a new video and if you guys have been following me on instagram you know i posted um like some rappers at this venue i used to like frequent a lot hey there's that bird <laughs> and um i've been really thinking about my time that I spend at that venue and I don't know if I've really gone into depth about my background as far as like doing events, being a, uh, an artist in that in relation to that specific venue and how I, I grew as a person there as a, a creative. So I don't know um, if you want to hear about that let me know. I, I kind of feel like I want to tell these stories because I have a lot of great memories there. I did a lot of growing up there you know my early 20s so yeah, I think I've, that's what I want to do, but let me know what y'all think about that. You definitely got a uh, bit, I can't talk. If you're not already, you should definitely be following me because eventually I'm going to do a 3K ghost theme giveaway. And I'm already starting to work with some of the small businesses that I'm going to be like gathering the prizes for. And I'm really excited about it because I like collaborating and see what we can come up with. Maybe I'll throw in a piece of an official merch. It just depends. So yeah, if you want to keep up with that, just make sure you're following me and I'll link everything down below so you guys can stay updated. <sighs> One thing I'll say also about this sandwich in a positive way, they put plenty of pickles. There was at least four or five pickles in here, which a lot of the chicken sandwiches that you have nowadays, they just put like two. If anything, if they remember. Mm. This is no cook shack mac and cheese, but it's pretty good. Mm. Very creamy. So guys, today is my ghost anniversary. It's the very first time that I ever saw ghosts was five years ago in Corpus Christi at the Concrete Street Amphitheater. I actually have like a whole story time video about that and I'll link that in the description as well. But I like remembering it. I like kind of revisiting those memories. And it was, it was a crazy night. Like I had never experienced anything like that before. Now, I wanted to wait a little bit before I get into this next topic. If you haven't seen the finale for Obi-Wan Kenobi, you might want to like pop ahead a little bit or just wait until you've seen it to watch this video or the rest of the video. But we need to talk about it because I just finished it and I'm like, ah, I have so many things to say. <laughs> Now, why I feel like it's a little short as a whole series, like because it's a limited series, 
I think the finale was everything that I wanted it to be. And with some surprises as well. Um, there's a lot of emotion in this episode, at least for me as well. But after I finished it, I was just like, I need to watch all six movies again and say what you want about the prequels. I like them, okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Um, some stuff may be a little campy or a little cheesy, but you can't have the whole of Star Wars without them. Like, I think they were done great. I mean, I mean, I don't really have any complaints about them. You guys can have some discourse in the comments if you will, but um, I really like how Obi-Wan kind of stepped into his power a little more because up until now he was he was weak he was distracted he didn't even know Anakin was still alive at this point um, and he tries to sacrifice himself to let um, the refugees you know get away and he has this uh, last a lightsaber duel with Darth Vader and he gets kind of sort of defeated at first and then he just he, he remembers the twins and he just comes out of there and he just goes ham on Darth Vader and the fight scenes were amazing the banter is really great um and you have this moment probably one of my favorite moments in the whole series where Obi-Wan cracks open Darth Vader's helmet and you see Hayden Christensen like his face like oh, obviously with makeup and everything how he looks burned and there's that moment where Obi-Wan's like Anakin and you get to hear a little bit of Hayden's voice as he's talking to him and Ah, oh, there's just so much nostalgia and all this love that just comes flooding back and you feel those feelings like he kind of raised Anakin and he they were brothers you know they had this really unique bond And for them to each have gone to like through a lot of trauma and seeing each other like that it was just like oh i loved it and then you know last time we talked i maybe have mentioned that my third sister figured out that about the twins and she was going to go to tatooine to kind of like kill luke as revenge the part that got to me in this part in this particular sequence was seeing more of beru and owen in action and feeling like they have all this love and passion for this boy of theirs, their nephew. And I was like, yeah, they may not be force sensitive, they might not have lightsabers, but they've got family, they've got love, and they were doing whatever it takes to protect this boy. And I, I got emotional at that part. I was like, Brew really stepped it up. I really like that they, she got some screen time because, you know, we don't, we don't see enough of them. They made an appearance in the prequels and then they're in the original series and I don't know, that would have just, it was nice to see more of them. And so, um, at the end, you know, Leia gets returned to her parents and she kind of gets all dressed up, kind of, re uh, th uh, how do you say it? Like a teaser to how her personality is going to shape when she gets older, the little rebel princess. And she's just so adorable. She's so smart. And Obi-Wan comes to see her because she didn't know if he was still alive. And another part that really got to me was that he told her that, you know, I, I lied to you when I, I told you I didn't know your real parents. And so he lists these traits. And he goes, this is what you got from your mother and this is what you got from your father. And they were like my friends and I, I, they're great people you know and i thought that was really that was really special and it ties it back to a new hope where you know she has that familiarity with him and it makes sense and then he travels back to tatooine i guess to finally leave luke and owen and brew's hands completely because he was always just kind of in the background like watching out for him and Owen finally he's been very protective of Luke at this point and he was like you want to meet him and I was like oh yes you should have seen like Obi-Wan's face light up and I was like oh my god and he does his hello there you know when he goes to see Luke and then you see him like riding away on his um I don't even know what they're called this is kind of like a camel creature <sighs> now if you're a Star Wars fan you've watched the movies you know um 
at the end of episode three, Yoda tells Obi-Wan, I can teach you how to commune and communicate with your old master, Qui-Gon Jinn, who passed away uh, in the first of the prequels. And so that was that, you know, we, we know about force ghosts and, you know, they can, they're sentient and they can talk and everything. And throughout this mini series, Obi-Wan has just been kind of talking to him and calling out to him, like, show me what to do, like, guide me, like, I need you. And like, nothing happens, you know, nothing happens. Now, the biggest payoff, I think, for this, throughout the more intense moments of the episode, is riding into this canyon, and you see, like, a force ghost appear, and I was like, no way, I was watching it, like, no, 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 no way, they're not gonna do that. Ah! How did I, like, how did they keep that under wraps, you know? And so, you see the back as it's fully formed, and Obi-Wan goes, Master Qui-Gon? And then... He turns around and it's Liam freaking Neeson. I'm like, ah, oh my God. Like, I really miss that character because there's so much to be explored. He was not like a, how do I explain it? I don't know if he was considered a gray Jedi, but he, he knows that it's not always black and white. Like some Jedi are like, oh, it's this is the way. And then you have the Sith or this is the way. So he was kind of always like blurring the lines, you know, because not everything's black and white. So I really loved him and... We got introduced to him in the first of the prequels, and then we lost him. And I really have wanted to see more of him, and we I got my wish, and it was just such a touching moment. And he t and Qui-Gon tells Obi-Wan, and I was like, well, it's about time. And he goes, well, I'm glad you showed up. And he's like, I've always been here, but you weren't ready to see. And I was like, Aslan! Because you know Liam Neeson also voices Aslan in The Lion, the Witch of the Wardrobe. I don't know. I was just so happy with the finale. I get, I'm just going to space out. So I'm going to finish my food. But I, I was really excited about it and happy. And let me know what y'all think. If you've seen it yet. Leave me a message down in the comments. And we can talk about it. they're going to continue some stories with Obi-Wan since it was such a limited series but they are developing an Ahsoka series it would be interesting just to have Ian McGregor like just have like a cameo but I'm pretty satisfied I'm not left like longing for more screen time because this was like a long time coming even from the actor himself like this has been been wanting to done this has been everybody's wanted to do this everybody's wanted this to happen for such a long time and it finally did I know I'm probably going to be left wanting more when it comes to Stranger Things, though. Like, I've been glimpsing by some spoilers, or not spoilers, but, like, just, like, the teaser trailer, and I don't want to see anything. I do not want to see anything until the last two episodes are released. I'm low-key kind of worried that something's going to happen that I'm going to be devastated over. But I trust the writers because so far they haven't let us down. I feel like it's going to be an epic showdown between the gang and Vecna. Maybe a last bite. Let's see. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay, last bite. Let's 
So, definitely not the best chicken sandwich in the world, obviously. But, uh, decent. And still dry. Like, not as dry as last time that I had one, but I think, to me, Popeye's tastes better. Um, and I'm not going to really judge it about presentation this time like imaginativity with is that even a word about this jack harlow meal because that's whatever like everything was like intact everything was cooked great i mean cooked to you know it's not raw or nothing um let's give it a six because like there's definitely chicken sandwiches above it for sure but it's not like the worst thing i've ever had and i just think that's a thing with uh kfc is that they're just a little on the dry side. So that's going to be it for the mukbang today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sitting with me and, you know, eating with me. If you want to say anything at all, please leave me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to check out all my links below. Everything's listed. And I hope you guys have a fantastic week, a fantastic day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.